right? So getting into our very first lesson of chapter 24. So this is now chapter 24 in our new book. Uh, so first lesson on this, uh, we just finished chapter 23, which was all about finding an instant rate of change uh, using the limiting process. Well, now when we get into chapter 24, uh, we're really accomplishing the same goal, but we get all the cool shortcuts of calculus. So uh, instead of having to go through that limiting process, we get some quicker ways to go. One of the things that we had to come up with was uh, some expression for H uh, that we dealt with in the last section. And there was quite a bit of side work that went into doing that. What you're going to see now moving forward is a just a much more efficient process. And that's the work with derivatives. So um, the, the process itself is called differentiating. Um, when you differentiate, you are finding the derivative. So uh, these can be worded either way. Sometimes they just say differentiate. Sometimes they just say find the derivative. Sometimes they just throw in the notation like this that you see right here. And so it just says find and it'll just give you the notation for f prime of x. Uh, but all those, that all means the same thing. So um, here we go. So what we're going to get today, there's, there are several different rules for differentiating. We're only going to be using one of those rules, and that is called the power rule. So the power rule works like this. Uh, to find our derivative, um, if we have a function, all we simply do is we take the exponent, we multiply it to the front, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent. So I'll give you a quick example of how that would look with part A here. So if we were to find the derivative of this expression, we multiply the 3 to the front. So 3 times 2 is 6. And we subtract 1 from our exponent. So we are down to 6x squared. And that represents the derivative. So this can now be used to find the instant rate of change at any point on this function. So one of the one of the tedious parts about the last um, chapter with doing the limiting process is even when you did all that work to find an expression for h, it only worked for one specific point. If you wanted to know the instant rate of change when x was 1, then you had to use 1 and 1 plus h and go through that whole process. But if you wanted a different rate of change, an instant rate of change that say x equals 2, you'd have to redo it all for x and x plus 2, or sorry, 2 and 2 plus h. Um, and so it was, yeah, that was a pretty tedious thing to do. But when you get this expression, the derivative, if I just want the instant rate of change when x is 1, I just plug in a 1. If I want the instant rate of change when x is 2, I just sub in a 2. Um, and I can get my answers that way now, and it's just so much quicker. Uh, one quick side uh, note for notation. Um, remember where all this comes from. The derivative, just like we saw in the last chapter, is slope or rate of change. Um, slope, as you know it, um, is y minus y over x minus x. Right? That's the way that we're used to seeing rate of change. Um, well, one, one other way of writing this is the difference in your y's over the difference in your x's. So... That's the same thing as what we just did here. So the rate of change of this expression or the slope of this expression is 6x squared. So whether you write that with uh, this formula, which we're not going to use anymore, or this notation, dy dx, or this notation, those all refer to the same thing. They refer to the derivative, which represents the rate of change of that function. So that's what we're finding when, as we're doing these. Uh, so let's just do a few more here with the power rule. Um, keep in mind, if you had something like a 3, that is like the same thing as having 3x to the 0 minus x squared. So um, if I were to write that as 3x to the 0, well, if I apply the power rule, 0 times anything is 0, so that whole term would go away. And all I have is the other term. So all that is to simply say, Whenever you have a constant, your constant goes away in the derivative. So I'm just going to work with the terms that have variables in them. So if I apply the power rule, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. I subtract 1 from my exponent, and I have negative 2x is my derivative. Same thing right here. Um, so think of this as x to the first power. So if I apply the power rule, 1 times 1 is 1, 
Uh, if I subtract this, this becomes x to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So that's all I have is for that first term is a 1. Right here, I'm doing 6 times 4. Subtract 1 from my exponent, and there's my derivative. Uh, moving on down to part D. Uh, with some of these, what I'm, what I'm wanting you to see with a few more of these is uh, sometimes you have to put them into friendlier terms in order to differentiate. Um, because it's, it might be hard to see with the way that it's written. Um, so if you rewrite it into friendlier terms, it can be easier to work with. So for example, on this one, might be easier for you to see this as 1 7th times x squared. Right? That means the same thing. Um, I'm just putting it into friendlier terms before I differentiate. So that represents f of x. So what we're going to do is differentiate to find the derivative, which is this power rule that we're still using here. So all I did was put this into friendlier terms. But now if I apply the power rule, 2 times 1 7th is 2 7ths. Subtract 1 from my exponent, and there's the derivative. Same thing on this one. Uh, if I want to put that into friendlier terms, um, I would bring my x up top, which makes my exponent negative. But now this, this is just a friendlier term to work with. So um, now if I do the power rule, negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Subtract 1 from my exponent, and I am down to negative 4. Um, and you're allowed to leave negative exponents in your answer, but um, oftentimes we like to kind of reformat that into a more proper notation. So we might uh, put the x back on bottom so that the exponent can become positive again. So anyway, that's what that would look like. Uh, doing something like this, again, we would need to foil this in order to um, use our power rule that we're going to be using. Uh, there's another rule for this when it's in this format, but we're not learning those other rules. So we're just going to use the power rule. So in order to use the power rule, uh, I need to separate out the terms. Um, so we're going to foil this one. So if I did x plus three, x to the third plus two times x to the third plus two, and I foiled that, uh, this is the new expression that I'm going to get. Um, let's see, we got x to the six plus four x to the third plus 4. So once you foil that, that's the look that you're going to come out with right there. Now you can use the power rule to get your derivative. So 6 times 1 is 6. Subtract 1 from the exponent. 3 times 4 is 12. Subtract 1 from the exponent. Constants go away, and that's our derivative. Same thing on this one, just a formatting issue. So let's distribute the x first so that all of our terms are nice and clearly separated and now we can find the derivative so uh, keep in mind we have not found the derivative yet oftentimes students stop here all we did was reformat this is still f of x I, I now have to use the power rule so uh, multiply the 4 to the front subtract 1 from the exponent same thing here if I multiply 1 times negative 3 that becomes x to the 0, so I don't need anything there. And then our last term would be 25x to the 4th. And that's our derivative. So again, just be, be familiar with some of the notation. They could either write it with the um, f prime of x or dy dx means the same thing. Another formatting issue right here, I'm going to divide each term by x. Um, let me just separate it out to make it nice and clear what we're doing here. So each term is being divided by x. Uh, the first term, I can simplify that. That just becomes 4x. My middle term just becomes 3. And if I bring this x up top, I have x to the negative 1. So this is our expression in its most friendliest terms for using the power rule. So now as I go through and differentiate, um, it's just easier to do from this format. So now as I apply the power rule, so f prime of x, 1 times 4 is 4. Subtract 1 from the exponent, we get x to the 0, so that goes away. 
the constants go away. And this would be if I multiply negative 1 to the front, I get negative 1x. Subtract 1 from your exponent, it's now negative 2. Um, and you could, if you wanted to, rewrite that with a positive exponent so it would look like this. Um, but that's not mandatory unless the directions specifically ask you to do that. So um, otherwise, you could leave it in either format. Second derivative, so here's what we're going to end on for lesson one. Second derivative is just doing the derivative of the derivative. So um, for those of you who kind of move forward with this, maybe in physics or some other area, um, you know, th this, this all now plays into distance, velocity, and acceleration, and that's what second derivatives are used for is cases like that. Uh, but anyway, for our purposes, we are just taking the derivative of the derivative. So if 6x to the third is our initial f of x value, that's f of x, then the first derivative, f prime of x, with our power rule, would be 18x squared. The second derivative is just the derivative of this. So 2 times 18 is 36. Subtract 1 from my exponent. Oops. And we're now down to x to the first. And that's it. You can keep going with those. We're not going to go any farther than a second derivative, but those can continue on. I could do a third derivative um, if I wanted to and to continue to go, but we're not going to go any farther than second derivative. So um, I threw the last one in here is just to show you kind of a more complicated version of this problem because um, you're going to see some of these. So uh, let me just start out by doing some FOIL here. So let me just leave him alone for a minute. And if I were to do this times itself, in other words, I would FOIL, um, here's what I'm going to come out with. Um, my first term is going to become x. My second term would become 10, and my last term would become 25 over x. Um, if, if you're trying that on your own and you're not getting it, here I'll show you really quick where that's coming from. So if I FOIL, so I'm just doing this guy times itself. So it looks like this. So as I multiply those first terms, rad x times rad x is just x. This times this, notice my uh, rad x here and the one on bottom would cancel, and I'm just left with a 5. Same thing would happen as I do that for the middle terms. And on the last term, um, again, I got the 25 on top, rad x times rad x. So we're going to be left with that uh, 25 over x. And if you combine the ones in the middle, we get this expression right here. So uh, that's, that's the FOIL process. If I now distribute the 2 over x, so 2 over x times x is just 2 times 10. And I'm going to get 20 over x. And the last one there at the end, looking at. 50 over x squared. Uh, one more thing I would do to put it, put it into friendlier terms before doing my derivative would be to bring my x's up top. So I'm going to write that as 20x to the negative 1 plus 50x to the negative 2. Now it is in its most friendliest form for using the power rule. So here we go with our first derivative. That's still f of x. We have not differentiated anything yet. We just reformatted the problem. So now as I go on to do f prime of x, your constant would go away. Negative 1 times 20 is negative 20. That becomes x to the negative 2. Negative 2 times 50 is negative 100. That becomes x to the negative 3. So that's our first derivative. And again, like we did with some of the other ones, like this one right here, um, I could reformat this uh, to make my exponent positive if I wanted to. I could write it as negative 20 over x squared and negative 100 over x to the third. Uh, but we don't have to, and especially if I need to do another derivative, like a second derivative, um, I want this format anyway. So let's just go from here. 
negative 2 times negative 20 is 40. This becomes x to the negative third. Negative 3 times negative 100 is positive 100. Sorry, positive 300. And that would become x to the negative fourth. And so there's our second derivative. And again, if I really wanted to, I could reformat my negative exponents by putting them on bottom to make them positive. But again, you don't have to do that unless the directions say to do that.